Hey there everybody and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to do a really in-depth walkthrough of how to get your application exported from AppGyver and imported as a web app or really just to cover the build services for those of you that are interested in creating your own mobile app whether it be for Android or iOS. So before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Now jumping straight in this video is in relation to a couple of apps or specifically one recently that's been released for the codelessfix.com platform, or I should just say the codelessfix.com website. So I have a ticket management limited app, which is up right now, more to come. But basically, if you're wanting to purchase that app, this will walk through how to get this exported. So in the last video, we walked through getting the app into AppGyver. Now, I actually have another app that I'm going to be hosting online. It's a just kind of like a generic portfolio app, just to walk you through the process start to finish. So once you have your app in AppGyver and you've finished making all of your edits, the next step is going to be launching build services. So you'll go up here to launch and then you'll click open build services. It's under the distribute button. And then from here, you'll see that you're basically at your app's build page. So this will be potentially a little different for different people, but you have three categories. Now you do not want to jump straight into build. These are in order. So a couple of things to note here, I highly recommend taking a look at the build service category just to learn more about this page if you're new to this, because some of these settings are going to be different. I can't cover every possible option. So we'll go left to right. When it comes to iOS, you would start by clicking configure, and then you're going to need your distribution certificate. So you're going to get that and most of these settings and assets when you're logged into the Apple App Store. You're going to be able to assign your certificates and things of that nature. Since I do not have a Mac currently, I can't walk through most of that. But I do have a video in my channel covering the basics of uploading to the Apple App Store if you're interested. So basically you upload your files here, you click Save and Next, you do the same thing here. Basically, whether or not you have lock screen, orientations, URL schemes, the idea here is all of this information is specific to your app. So your provisioning profile, your bundle identifier, your display name, etc. And then it, there occasionally will be build schemes. You need to check which one you need, but right now it's just the one. Then this is the part that you really want to pay attention to because AppGyver gives you their logo by default, but you have the ability to upload launch screens, notification icons, etc. They specify right here the resolution. So if you can find icons that are a perfect square, what I do is I start out with an icon that is 1024 by 1024, and then the easiest way, just open that in Paint or a similar program and use the resize option, and then you can resize it and just go down slowly. Bear in mind that if you start at a low resolution and move up, it's going to get very pixelated, so you want to start higher up and then go down. Also bearing in mind that if you're choosing something that's a rectangle and you resize, then it's going to get a little warped. But the idea here is you're just going to click choose file and upload all of your images. I also recommend doing that slowly to give AppGyver time to process. Then you'll click save and next. <clears throat> so at this point, these are usage strings. So explaining what your app needs. Uh, again, this is based on what your app is actually going to be doing. So this section is specific to the different types of usage for your application. It's somewhat self-explanatory, but you can view their help article if you have questions. Now, one thing I want to note about this section here is I don't recommend that you add the same icon for everything. For example, launch screens, these are what's going to appear as your app is initially loading. Icons are what appear on the home screen, and then these are what appear when your settings are basically being displayed. So um, you know, things like that. So you may want to change it up. In some cases it would be the same, but I just want to highlight that. And then you'll click save and next, and you'll see you land right back here. So for iOS, you're going to click build. You're going to select your client runtime version. I typically prefer the newest, and then you'll need a version number and a short version. Now you'll see here, if you were to just type one, it gives you the version notation. So you may want to start with 1.0.0, short version, it'll say the same thing. And then you can increment this, for example, 1.0.1, 1.0.2, or following whatever scheme you see fit. 
Once this is done, you will select your runtime version and click build. So once you click this, the build option will be available. So I will submit this. I know it's going to error out because I did not upload any of the information. Now, when we move over to Android, same exact process. I have a video on my channel about how to create a key store file. So you'll upload your key store file here, add in your password, alias, and alias password, making sure that you have those stored in a safe place because you do not want to lose them. They are needed for your app. Then you will put in your bundle settings. So package identifier, display name, URL scheme, at this point, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to want to set the build scheme to AAB, which is what is now accepted in Google Play. Previously, you would upload APK files. I think there may still be a way to do that, but right now I've been using AAB files. So fill out everything here in relation to your app. Same thing when it comes to image assets. You're going to upload all of your icons. Luckily, some of these sizes, I think, are shared between this and iOS. So same thing. You have your splash screens, notifications, and other icons here. Once you've uploaded those, you click Save and Next. And you just click any permissions that you need to add here. So some of these will automatically be received by AppGyver based on the things that you have added. So for example, if your app utilizes the camera, this will probably be over here. So if it's already set over here, I would recommend just keeping it. The last thing you want is to have trouble with your app not being recognized doing what it's supposed to do. When you're done, you click Save and Next, again, making sure all of this information is correct. You will click Build. You'll choose the bundle type or the file type the runtime version, and then the version code and version name, just like you did before. When you start typing, you'll see if it gives you an error or not, and it'll tell you right here basically the format. And when you're done, you just click Build, and the process will get started in the background. Now you'll see I have an error here, and that's because I did not include any of the information that they needed. I will have an error here. If at any point you get errors when you include everything, you can click show error message and it's a little bit technical, but you will be able to find, for example, could not match scheme with provisioning profiles sent, meaning either there's an issue with those files or they're not included in my case. Same thing with the Android app. When you have issues, it'll be the same process. Now the web app, which is the case for the ticket management platform is much easier. So you can ignore the first part, but if you want to host yours at a uh, appgiverapp.com domain, I'm not sure if they're still allowing people to do this or not, but uh, I think at some point they may be kind of decommissioning this. Regardless, you're wanting to host your own for this video, so you're going to click Save and Next and ignore that. There's only a zip build scheme right now, but that's the one we need. You'll upload a fave icon. Now, one thing to note is this is the icon that appears right here in your new tab. So you'll see, for example, this is Hostingers, this is the one for their uh, file manager, and this is AppGyvers. When it comes to the fave icon, I wish AppGyver put some notes here, but if I'm not mistaken, this needs to be in a 16 pixels by 16 pixels ICO format. You can look up online converters to convert your image to an ICO file, Bearing in mind, so this is mine, for example, for the Tyler Talks logo, I found a converter online. The only thing I recommend there is because you are downloading files from a random website, make sure that you vet it and have your antivirus software and stuff turned on so you don't end up getting anything malicious. There may be other safer ways to convert it, but the idea here is you either need, I think it's a 16 by 16, you may be able to use a 32 by 32. So this is just that icon that appears up at the top. You can either choose file and insert it here, or at the end, before you upload it, you can delete and add it, and I'll show you how. We will now click Save and Next. Permissions, there are none chosen, so we'll just click Save and Next. And again, fill all of that out to be relevant to you. I did that before this video, so the last step for you is just to select your options, so zip, runtime version, uh, should it be deployed? Yes or no. And then version number. And then you just click build and it'll get started in the background. Now I did it before this video because sometimes it can take anywhere from five minutes to 30. I'm not sure if that depends on server activity or app size or what. But the idea here is I already have that version built. So once it's done, all you have to do is click download. And then you'll see in the bottom left hand side of the screen, it downloads relatively quickly and I have the standalone app build files. 
So at this point, we're ready to host just the web app. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. Now, <clears throat> my recommendation for you is to go to a website called Hostinger. It's hostinger.com. They offer a couple of different solutions, but what I love is if you get the premium option through them, it's like two to three dollars a month, somewhere in there. It allows you to manage multiple domains connected to one account. So I have four right now. So you can download and buy, or you can buy d different domains. They have an app builder. So if you go to their website section, you can actually use their app builder, or you can just basically store your app online to be accessed. So I'm going to show you your two options for doing this. Your first option here is when you go to Hostinger and you set an account and you buy your domain, you can open up your main dashboard in the hosting section and you'll see there's a file manager button somewhere. When you open up file manager, it will take you to a page that looks exactly like this. Your public HTML file is basically the only thing there. And if I'm not mistaken inside of it, it should be empty. In my case, there are files because I am currently using this for my project. So what we'll do is I left this sitting for a while, so I may need to log out and log back in. But the idea here is the file browsing area is where you can access all of your files. So these are all the pages from AppGyver, etc. So one thing I want to show before we walk through hosting, which is very easy, is that you see the similarities. This is basically the exact same thing on the left as what's on the right. So if you were to extract everything from your zip file, all of these files are displayed basically one to one as they are over here on the left hand side, meaning the website is literally just all of this. So we have two choices to get your web app uploaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control A here and delete everything just to show that we can do this from scratch. And then we will go home to our dashboard and we're going to use the easier of the two options. So in this case, we're going to look at the website section and you're looking for the import website option. In this case, you can provide your zip file. They do note that there's a 256 megabyte limit. So in this case, we will click import and then we will choose our file and we will click import. The process does not take that long. I would say at the most it would take like two to 10 minutes depending on the file size. And I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty sure it's just extracting all of that file's contents into this online folder. So anything in the public HTML folder is what you're looking for. Now I want to cover a couple of things for those of you that are interested in subdomains and things like that. But first things first, for those of you that just want to host your web app online, this is it. You're done. Once you've done these steps and you get this file upload successful, when you click go to website, usually it'll give you this forbidden error. It takes a couple of seconds for everything to register. And then you will now notice that the app is up and it is functional. So the app that we were just looking at in AppGyver is now fully functional and hosted at the domain name that we chose. And it is fully functional as well. When you click the links, they work and it navigates to the new page up top. So everything's working. So if that's all you needed to do, you are done and you can stop watching here. But for those of you that want to learn a couple of additional features or options, I want to show you another way that you can import this if your website is larger than 256 uh, megabytes. So if you go to file manager and we'll open it again so we don't get that error message <clears throat> and you'll see we have the folder again and once more all of the files that I just deleted and that's because we literally just re-uploaded them. So in this case if you're looking to get this set up for example you want to upload these files yourself. You can find all of your different folders and in this case I'll go to my desktop I'll add a new folder and then I'll click OK and extract just these to that folder. So now what you can do is you can actually go to your desktop, 
find that new folder. So in this case, it's right here and you've extracted all of the contents and you can just click control A and you'll notice you can actually drop it straight into your public HTML folder. This will essentially do the exact same thing and allow you to host your website. If you miss any of your files or have any issues or make any mistakes like that, then you could end up causing some issues and the website won't function correctly. So you need to make sure all the files go here. Now, <clears throat> one other thing to note, and a cool feature of, for example, Hostinger, if you go to websites, you can go and look through, they have a couple of really cool options. Um, so I think it's actually in domains, there's a subdomains tab. If you want, you could add in a domain like demo, dot Tyler's portfolio, for example, if you choose custom folder and you choose the name of the domain and click create, it's going to, we'll go back to the public HTML <clears throat> and you'll see in that folder, there is now a demo folder. And because this has been set up in the back end, we can go into the demo folder and drop contents for a different website. So for example, we can have two different websites hosted in the same subdomain. So I'll show you what I mean really quickly and then we'll be able to close out this video. So <clears throat> if you go to ticketmanagementlimited.codelessfix.app, here is the application as a standalone app. If you go to ticketmanagementdemo.codelessfix.app, here is a demo version of the same application. So it's two different apps hosted at the same, um, or hosted at the same like core URL. And all I did here was I put the default app here, and then I created a new subfolder and a new subdomain and dropped the separate app there. So all you do is the same process, just unload all of your files. Now, if you're interested, for example, when it comes to AppGyver files, you'll see up here it says Codeless Fix and has my image. But if I were to go to the actual um, website for this portfolio website, you'll see when we go there, it has the uh, AppGyver logo at the top. So you'll need to go in. I have a separate video on how to host a static web file online that shows you how to remove the title of the page so that it can say whatever the name of your app is instead of it being your actual uh, instead of it being the app giver logo i'll walk through that really quickly now so <clears throat> on the desktop which is where i've extracted all of my files this is the fave icon you can replace with yours and then if you go if we're doing an app giver app specifically there's a next and then in here, you'll see you have a couple of different folders. So what we're basically looking for is the static folder. And then you're going to go to chunks. So you open up your app, the next folder, static, then go to chunks. And then you're going to go to pages. In here, there is a file named app dash and then a bunch of letters and numbers. If you open this file, it's going to look very difficult to read, but if you just hit Control F and type in AppGyver and hit Next, what you're looking for is where it says title. In this case, mine says title, null, and in double quotes, AppGyver. The only part that you wanna replace here is just this part here that says AppGyver. You do not remove the quotes. Whatever you put here is going to replace that title section when you upload your web app so that it'll now say the name of your app or website. So I know that this was a lengthy video, but I hope it wasn't too complicated. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.